no artificial intelligence, no drugs, no easy tricks. This is a 3D jewelry modeling and rendering tutorial in Blender 4.4. Let's get started. Select the default cube and give it dimensions of 12 millimeters. Go to the top view, add mesh plane. Go to edit mode, x-rays, grab, select the two bottom vertices, extrude, 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 and extrude. Select the right side vertices, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale, extrude, scale. Tweak the shape, exit edit mode, call it shell 001, save and be happy. Go to add empty plane axis, call it empty multiplier. Select the shell, go to modifiers, add modifier array. Object offset, empty multiplier. Count 24. Grab the shell and move it. Scale it up slightly. Start rotating to the left. Make the shells touch slightly. Start adapting the count closer to the center here. Save and be happy. Go to edit mode. Go further in tweaking the shape of the shell. Always keeping a slight contact between the shells in order to complete the shape of the snail. Exit edit mode, save and be happy. Now we want some volume, some shape in 3D. Let's go to edit mode, select everything with A. Extrude on the Z axis. Hide this level for a moment and select the inside vertices of the bottom floor. Delete the inside. Alt H to reveal the other vertices. Select the center vertex, turn on proportional editing and grab on the Z axis. Adapt the area of effect and develop the shape in the 3D scape. Deselect everything, Alt A and select the bottom floor. Turn off proportional editing, scale on the Z axis to zero. On the global axis, go to Z, zero. Invert the selection, move it to the bottom level and go back up 2.5 millimeters to have some reference for the thickness. Exit edit mode. Now, if you look at our shapes, they're getting thinner and thinner. To deal with this, readapt the Z scale to something smaller. Add a bevel modifier before the array. Add a subdivision surface modifier before the array. Three levels. Add a solidify modifier at the top. Offset minus one. We're going to go to the inside. Thickness 1.25 millimeters. Check the shape, save, and be happy. Now go to viewport shading, go to matcap, set this pretty sepia tone, and turn on the edge ridges and valleys. It's time to go to edit mode to work on the shape and readapt the levels into something more harmonic. It means that some things are going to go up and some other things are going to go down. The result will be a shape with a lot more personality. Exit edit mode, save and be happy. And now it's the perfect time to append the diamond and we're going to set it at two millimeters in diameter. I'm going to set up the snap to center, face project, align rotation to target, affect, move and rotate. Turn the snap on, top view, I'm going to start at the edge to make a line of gems for all the shells. Here you can select the entire line, make a copy, and the snap will work for all the gems at the same time. If necessary, adjust the scale of the diamonds. Don't forget to check real-life diamonds charts for existing sizes. My smallest line of diamonds is using 1mm diamonds. Complete the distribution of the diamonds at the edges and be happy. Now let's add a curve busy circle. In edit mode, create this little shape. 
Now go to a line of diamonds and add a curve Bezier curve. Turn the snap on, go to edit mode. Start working a frame design around the diamonds. To close the curve, go to toggle cyclic. If necessary, use free handle types to complete your design. In data, use a higher resolution and set the bevel object to our little shape. Select all the control points and adapt the mean radius as needed. Add a mesh sphere, turn it into a prong in edit mode. Turn the snap on and start adjusting the prongs wherever needed. Um, the prongs are in place, save and be happy. Don't forget to decorate the shell like if you were inspired by Poseidon himself using Bezier curves and the tapper curve and make the boolean cuts for the position of the diamonds. Save and go for a swim. Now make a copy of the shell, shift D, enter. And let's go to edit mode, side view. Select and remove the top, select the bottom, move it, minus one millimeter and extrude it on the Z axis, minus 1.2 millimeters. Now select everything and flip the normals if necessary to get the perfect gallery. We're going to connect the levels by making small bridges around the design. If needed, make some cleverly placed loop cuts and adapt the geometry. On the back, you can also add decorations to create the perfect gallery. Exit edit mode, save and be happy. At this stage, we're going to add a gem at the center. We're going to make it a one carat diamond and center it here. Now I'm going to add a sphere with many segments. I'm going to scale it and in edit mode, I'm going to keep just the bottom plate and rise it and scale it. So it comes above the shell and to let the light go through, I'm going to erase the center vertices. Now for the modifiers, I'm going to add a solidify modifier, offset zero, thickness 0.8. Don't forget to reset the scale. Now I'm going to add a bevel shade smooth. Now I'm going to properly raise the gem above the metal. Now using the same curves I'm using for the decorations, I'm going to create the prong setting for the central diamond. Now it's time to add a torus for the bale with a proper size and proper placement. Then we can proceed to add the bale, add mesh plane, edit mode, and start creating this shape. Extrude on the x-axis, three millimeters. Now add a mirror modifier on the x and z axis. Then add a solidify modifier, thickness 0.84 to the outside. Add a bevel modifier, a subdivision surface modifier, level three. Then add a simple before modifier, tapper, find the proper axis. If necessary, select the top vertex, cursor to select it, exit edit mode, set the origin to the 3D cursor, and work on the tapper. Again, restrict, lock the Z axis. Now in edit mode, select the edge, make a copy, shift D, separate with P. Exit edit mode, select that edge, go to edit mode, select the bottom and top vertex to a shift S cursor to select it. Now work from the 3D cursor, select everything, extrude and scale, correct the geometry as needed, tweak the thickness of the solidify modifier. Then obviously it will be time to decorate the bale with curves and to complete the design of the entire shell. Also now will be the perfect time to save and be happy. Today we're going to make 3D jewelry rendering in Blender Cycles. So save a new file and let's go to shading. Go to Polyhaven and download the Brown Photo Studio 0 to 4K AXR. Go back to Blender, World Properties, Color, Environment Texture and load this Brown Photo Studio 0 to AXR as your environment. Now select all the elements that are going to receive gold. New material, let's call it yellow gold. Go to object, link materials, 
Set metallic to 1 and roughness to 0 0.5. Adapt the gold color according to your preferences. Now go to World, add a texture coordinates node generated to vector on the environment. Add a vector mapping in the middle to the rotation axis of the environment until you get something you like and go back to Object Shading. Add a texture coordinate mapping Voronoi texture bump to the normal, tweak the scale of the mapping, the scale of the Voronoi, smooth F1 type, and tweak the strength of the bump to get light scratches on your gold. If you want the gold to be more polished, further lower the strength. Now also add a bevel node to the normal, tweak the samples and the radius. Select all the diamonds, create a new material, diamond, Object, Link, Link Materials, Base Color, Full White, Roughness 0, IOR 2.418, Transmission Weight 1. Many people often have problems with gems. That's because they leave their gems inside the metal or touching the metal. That is a totally wrong practice. The gems must have their spaces cut out with the cutters and be above the metal using the correct index of refraction of the mineral gemstone to get nice realistic looking jewelry renders in any software. It's really important that you stop putting the gems inside the metal or using flat gemstones. The gemstones must be properly faceted and have the correct proportions and be set in their correct spaces above the metal to avoid breaking the gems. Now we're going to create an excellent fake dispersion for the diamond, creating a glass material shader using texture coordinates, Voronoi texture, and HSV node. Set the proper IOR for the diamond to the glass. Tweak the scale of the Voronoi, type smooth F1, saturation 2, value 2. Set the texture coordinate to reflection for the vector. Then we're going to mix our principal BSDF diamond white material with the mix shader and the factor is going to be a Voronoi texture with a brightness and contrast node. Tweaking the contrast will help you set the strength of the fake dispersion. Set it any way you like. The result will be very attractive. Now add a mesh plane, make it bigger and set it to the floor. Create a new material. Set a light blue color, metallic one, to be happy. It's time to go to layout. Select your favorite angle and set the camera to the view. We're going to use a square resolution and tweak the camera. For the render settings, use the open image denoiser at the highest level your hardware can handle. Set the bounces to pretty high numbers. For the samples, I will be using 320. It's time to make the render and press F12. Now just wait. From here we're going to go to compositing, use the nodes and add a glare node. Set the angle to 45. Check the result. I'm going to use more color modulation and tweak the threshold. Then also I will tweak the fade to still get nice glowing areas. Don't forget to save the render and be happy. This was a 3D jewelry modeling and rendering tutorial in Blender 4.4 using the Cycles render engine. Next time we'll make the render with Octane render engine and then we'll have a tutorial using LuxCore render engine. My name is Damien Rohrbach, the Jewelry Jedi. Thanks for supporting my channel and my work, buying my assets on Superhive Blender Market and becoming members of my channel. Take care of the planet and be nice to animals. Don't forget to be happy and see you soon.